Hey guys, John here. Um, just a kind of a small little video I've been thinking of doing for a while. Um, kind of been thinking about, you know, kind of video ideas, you know, to do to kind of keep this channel active. Um, and today I was going to talk a bit about um, magic in D and D or magic in and, you know, medieval fantasy games in general and how I perceive them and how I generally kind of work them in my own games and I'm going to give some examples of other done some other settings just to kind of inspire, you know, um, veteran players or new or veteran DMs or new DMs, you know, to look at stuff, you know, differently as um, I really think from time to time, you know, we need to kind of take those old D&D stereotypes of magic and just kind of change them, tweak them. Um, I'm going to start first with um, the divine magic of clerics, paladins, etc. Um, you know, uh, this magic obviously divine. It's magic of the gods, and it's how all that works out. You know, um, and uh, kind of, you know, you have these devotees of their faith, and they're granted powers by their deity, and to do to be that deity's emissary on on the world. Um, this magic is very much um, very much a, a a very kind of pure kind of magic. You know, it's coming directly from the gods. You know, all that kind of stuff. And those clerics, paladins, you know, priests. Um, are very much following the tenets of that god's faith, you know, and try to worship and practice, and also spread, you know, the faith um, to the point where you do have clerics and priests that um, do uh, try to kind of, you know, inquisition kind of stuff comes into play there, where you have, you know, force you know, the idea of force converting, which happens, and that's actually something that's really not seen much in a lot of D&D games, I feel, and I think that's kind of a missed opportunity, especially for, like, the really lawful good deities, you know, and the, even the really chaotic evil deities, uh, not so much chaotic evil, because they really don't care, but really, like, anything that's lawful, like, especially lawful good, like, you know, it, they, they are really the ones, um, despite being lawful good, they're really the ones that would kind of force Lincoln convert because you must be good and righteous and all that jazz. Um, uh, that's uh, moving on the topic of divine. Um, cleric spell preparation is very much meditation and prayer and, you know, being devout to the point where much of their components for their spells are their holy symbol and their prayer. You know, most of their stuff is verbal and semantic spells. They don't really have much material components, but what it really comes down to it's either, you know, a sacrifice of gold or, you know, their their prayer, their holy symbol. Um, also, um, a good uh, divine magic is very much accepted. It's very much in terms of fantasy, it's, and even in real life, magic of the gods is very much accepted. You know, many people say, well, the Bible doesn't like witchcraft, but yet, you know, Jesus turns water, Jesus, at least you know, in the Catholic Bible, in the Christian Bible, turns water into wine. You know, I mean, that that's magic. You know, that's not, you know, fireball magic, but that, that, that's magic. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, but yeah, I'll go back on the kind of backpedal a bit. Um, you know, the meditation and prayer it takes for spells. You know, this can be done very much. How I like to do it is, um, you know, it's at night, you know, under the cover of the stars. You know, the stars are all like the gods and that kind of thing. And there are settings, you know, like Dragonlands, where they have literally the constellations of the gods are in the sky. So it's a very physical representation of the gods power that, that they pray to, and even in my homebrew world, I kind of have that mentality of, you know, 
clerics, they must pray to the constellation of God, which I, I, I like. I like it. It's a, it's a very interesting flair to clerics and priests and whatnot. Moving on. Arcane magic. This is the magic of wizards, sorcerers, even warlocks to a point. Um, arcane magic is very much of a science. It's very much unknown magic. It requires a lot of study and preparation and thought. You know, it's, it's also kind of more in lines of innate ability. I don't need to pray to a god. I have the magic board. I have the magic coursing through my veins. It's in my blood. You know, that kind of really cool, you know, Rice Le Magier, Elminster. Uh, I'll leave Elminster out of that because in some editions he is, he is a mage cleric. But yeah, like Rice Le Magier, he's from Dragonlance. Um, you know, well, you know, he is, you know, magic. Um, and his physical body, while weak, his mental capacity and his innate magical ability is strong to the point where he became an earth mage of a tower. Um, you also have um, arcane magic has also been in some settings like Dark Sun. It's been the source of um, power and also it pretty much defiles the land. You know, Dark Sun especially where the whole world was turned to a wasteland because of the Sorcerer Kings, you know, these arcane magic users who wield their power to dominate others. That's very cool, and I, I really, I like the idea of, like, you know, let's see if you watch my channel before, you know, but you probably know how much I love Dark Sun. Or if, if anybody watching knows me in person, they, I like Dark Sun. Um, but anyway, to continue on that, mageocracies are a thing, where wizards will try to assert their dominance and rule over a country. You see this in the Forgotten Realms, in the uh, country of Thay, you know, the Red Wizards of Thay. Um, in my homebrew, I have like a couple of mageocracies in my homebrew world that are, one's a very techno steampunk, technologically advanced city that uses magic in, 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 in as well as these, like these, metal automatons, so now that they are this, like, unstoppable force, and I have also, like, a very neutral, peaceful, agricultural, who really just uses their uh, farm, their magic as craftsmen, crafting magic items, and trying to be peaceful, and just keep knowledge. And then I have, you know, of course, the necromancers who just want to raise the dead and make flush columns everywhere. Um, and that's another thing as in talking about necromancers. Arcane magic is also very much about the schools of magic, where you have evocation, illusion, necromancy, tra uh, transmutation, illiterate, uh, alteration. You know, all these different schools of magic that go with the idea that it's a science, that, that, that the arcane arts are a science that must be studied, practiced, must prepare. It's very cool, and it's very cool. And while, you know, Divine magic has its divine, its domains and spheres. They're really not, you don't have to, you know, being that that's from the gods and that's, that falls under what the god is the god of, you know, Paladin's the god of, the god of justice. So all the spells really have to do with justice or some type of form of that. While arcane, in arcane with the different schools of magic, you have, you know, the illusionist who makes phantasms. You know, you just have these really interesting character types. So anyway, um, that's kind of been on arcane a bit. Uh, I might come back to some things. Um, the next one is the druidic, the druidic or primal magic of druids. Um, in some editions, the druids are considered divine, but in recent editions, they've been considered, you know, the, the magic of the, they, they worship nature and the nature deities, which is very much valid. Um, I like to think of the magic of druids as kind of a halfway point between divine and arcane, where it's, yeah, it's kind of from a god, but it's also very much raw nature. Um, where you, like, uh, I like to use um, the Celtic druids 
that uh, Julius Caesar wrote about when he invaded Rome, he reported them being very savage, very um, secretive, and also very uh, keen on uh, blood sacrifice or to appease their gods and to, you know, gain their power. I, I very much like that. I, I really do wish, uh, you know, there was like a in D and D the druids would re would kind of reflect that because they really don't. Uh, they really come off as hippies, and I think that's kind of a shame that we've relegated the really coolness of the druid to being just a tree a tree hugging hippie. Um, it's very much a shame, and yeah, because if you think about it, you know, druids are nature. Think about how much how much force is in nature, how much chaos is nature. You know, to the point where a lot of druids are it's been said that a lot of druids are neutral. You know, because they have the chaos of nature and they can kind of wield it as they may, seeking just justice or, you know, what's right. You know, as, you know, they can adjudicate as they need, as may be. Druids also, in very uh, many, many, and, um, many settings um, could be considered heathens because they kind of are divine, like they worship, but they worship the god of, like they worship the sun, the sun, or the tree. You know, they don't really worship a finite deity, although there are some exceptions to that. But yeah, so, I mean, they're very much kind of heathens, and um, I think really the closest thing I could come up with is in Dragonlance, the Seekers are kind of healthy, you know, these heathens who don't really have a lot of power. Um, but yeah, um, in my homebrew setting, I like to keep kind of druids very much to the traditional Celtic where it's, they don't, like, they, they're very secretive, you know, they, uh, the Hierophant Druid gathers all the Druids in one place, and they conduct ceremonies of sacrifices, and, and that's kind of what they do, and that's how they get, and they channel the magic of nature within them, so yeah, I, I kind of like that, I, I kind of like the brutal grittiness of the Druid a bit more, and I'm trying to more and more the Druids bring that out. Um, Druids often get spirit iron animals in D&D. You know, you have like uh, the snake or the wolf. It's really always kind of a wolf if you think about it, because, you know, the wolf's the easiest one to fight with. However, you know, the spirit animal goes back to like Native Americans, you know, that you have kind of this spirit within you of this animal, you know, like a wolf or a coyote. And so it's cool. You know, to the point where Native American deities are, there is one of the coyote. There is one of the raven. You know, so yeah, that is cool. And uh, true magic, I think, is very, very underutilized in D and D because, like I said, a lot of us just think it's the true. Oh, tree, tree hugging hippie, you know, which I think that's very much. It's a, it, you know, it's a good kind of starting off point, but you know, it's not all the druid. It's not all at the, the core of the druid. Um, and last, last but not least. I want to talk about uh, something that's probably not really considered magic, but it, it is definitely a power source, and that is psionics. Um, and the reason why I put psionics on this list is because it kind of is another form of magic. It's the magic of the mind. It's those things that you can do just in your head. And, you know, if you can think it, you can do it. And it's the fact that these, psion these psions or psionicists can just... Think about something and like you do it, you know. You're comp like that's how like like a wizard might have to, to to make someone go to sleep, throw sand or rose petals in their eyes, and kind of say like mystical words. When if a psychologist wanted to do that, he could just say, "You feel tired," like you know, like telekinesis. You know, you, you feel soft. Go just go to sleep. You know, I I think it's a really cool flavor, and it's uh, also psionics. It's just it's really cool flavor, and I think if anyone can ever handle it in a D and D game, it'd be great. Um, I really hope with fifth edition they really, you know, fix psionics because psionics really hasn't been since its early days. It really hasn't been practical. It's always been overpowered, um, especially if you do it wrong. Um, fourth edition came very close to that kind of workable psionics. That was fourth edition. And it, it worked. However, it was towards the end, and really no one gave a shit at that point. Um, 
say on it, just to touch on that, it's, it's very selective, you know, ma arcane magic and divine magic and even braille magic, that type of stuff that, like, can follow in families, you know, like, you can have a bloodline of wizards or a bloodline of clerics or druids, but really psionics is more of the thing where it's just, like, like, once in a generation, there might be psionics, and even then, there might be, you know, it's also very misunderstood. It's almost like, it's not even like druidism. It's just, if you, if, you have, if you have psionic powers, it's like, what what am I doing? It's kind of like like mutants from X-Men, you know? It's like this mutation of magic. So, and because of that, it's very, this, like, strange, boring, raises many questions. Another example, Dark Sun. Psionics is really essential in that setting where you have these, you know, arcane magic destroy the earth and then the psionics is this pure kind of power source that's, that doesn't really use up anything, you know? So it, it's cool. It's um definitely cool and it's like, um, but in DMs, if anybody has any stories about psionics in their games, I'd love to hear them because I, I always like hearing especially those types of stories because they're just fun. It's, you know, it's, just, it's a thing that's in D&D that's been in D&D since uh, the, the very beginning, and that really no one's used, and, and no one's utilized truly really effectively because the rules have always been stupid with it. So anyway, um, that's my video on team, on magic in D and D and fantasy. Um, uh, please share your stories about this, what your thoughts are. Um, I always like hearing your stuff. I always like hearing you guys, you guys stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try to make more videos as I can. And, yeah, as always, I'm John. It's been another episode of Vault of the Dungeon Master, and happy gaming.